Exercise 41.3. This exercise is to be solved manually. Consider the region enclosed by the graphs of y equals 1 half x squared minus 3 halves x plus 1 and y equals negative x squared plus 6x minus 5. Part A. Sketch a quality graph of the described region. Provide a graphic approximation of the area of the region. Part B. Provide a calculus calculation that yields the exact area of the region. And Part C. Assess the correctness of Parts A and B by examining for consistency between the two results. Part A. Graphic approximation. I first like to try to get a rough visualization of the graphs involved so that I can draw a coordinate system that will fit everything nicely in one step if possible. So here looking at this first uh, equation this is going to be okay a parabola it's going to have a vertical axis of symmetry it's going to open up it's going to be a translation of y equal to one half x squared and its x-coordinate will be negative b over 2a a little handy formula to probably keep memorized and so I'll re make a note of that in this case negative b is going to be negative of negative 3 halves 3 halves divide by 2a 2 by 1 half 1 okay three halves. The y coordinate that's just by substitution. So substituting three halves into the formula and let's see this becomes negative one eighth. Okay so there's our vertex for y one graph three halves negative one eighth. All right, and thereafter, uh, we think it is a translation of y equal to one half x squared, which is a somewhat wide parabola. Okay, let's go into y two. Oh, by the way, to keep these distinct, one and y two. I'm going to rename these so that they, in the future, we have a reference to distinguish them. So for y two, also a quadratic function also has a parabola for a graph this one it's going to be a translation of y equal to negative x squared I want its vertex right away though to see where to position it in the coordinate system so for y2 we again have the x coordinate of the vertex equal to opposite of b over 2a and that will be a negative 6 over 2 by negative 1, negative 2, known as 3, the y coordinate by substitution. Okay, we'll have a negative of 3 squared, negative 9, plus 6 by 3, plus 18, minus 5, 18, then minusing 14, 4. Okay, 3, 4, the vertex there. Now, if I think about this, 3, 4, and then it opens down a translation of y equal to negative x squared this first parabola vertex three halves negative eighth but opening up okay apparently it's a first quadrant graph for the most part and the axes need only be about five units long Okay, I'll sketch up that coordinate system next. Alright, so here's the coordinate system. I also thought a scale of one centimeter equals one half unit works out pretty well for this because it will make uh, the region somewhat large so we get an improved accuracy in the graphic approximation. Secondly, I do have a x coordinate of a vertex at three halves so having tick marks every half unit will make the graphing much easier for me when I take advantage of its translation properties so let's get started with the y1 graph going in red 
vertex first, 3 halves, negative 1 eighth. There's 3 halves. Alright, negative 1 eighth. Need to go down 2.5 millimeters actually. Okay, could label it V, 3 halves, negative 1 eighth. Alright, now using the translation idea to help me do that. I'm now thinking about graphing y equal to one half x squared and that go, has a vertex at the origin so there's my origin so I would go right one and up one half which is one centimeter I go left one keeping two and a half millimeters are on the uh, x-axis there and up one half one centimeter okay let's uh, go right to and then when you're thinking about y equal to one half x squared well that'd be one half of four or two which is four centimeters there same thing going to the left one two two and a half millimeters on the x-axis and then go up four centimeters okay there's uh, s some points sketch in a parabola that passes through these alright about like so and label it this is y sub one alright time for another color to get the graph of y2 going first it's vertex 3 4 okay 8 centimeters up make sure we're parallel to this y-axis right there could label it v 3 4 okay now I just have to think about graphing a y equal to negative x squared which would be left one down one left two down four or eight centimeters okay back to the vertex here and now let's go right one down one just two centimeters and then we can go right two down four okay sketch in a parabola that goes through these points okay about like so and uh, let's label this curve y sub two a couple of uh, small checks we could provide on ourselves here to keep from going astray so early in the problem uh, this red y1 graph a little what's another little something we could check to make sure that this has been graphed properly because remember this method where you get the vertex and then just graph the translation it's very fast but one error in the vertex calculation and everything is all mistaken okay so one property it has is a, uh, a y-intercept in the vicinity of one looking back at the formulation if we let x be zero y is actually equal to one okay it's consistent with its y-intercept that's good the y2 curve what about it the y-intercept is a negative five which seems to look okay another little something else I guess we could do here it looks like this went right through the points uh, one zero five zero let's mentally see what the uh, x-intercepts are of that graph you let y equal to zero you have zero equals negative x squared plus six x minus five or zero equals x squared minus six x plus five and there's a factorization there uh, x minus five x minus one and that gives us five and one yeah that looks good okay now we wanted the enclosed region which is now right here and very prominent in front of us it's time to do some uh, shading
to make this be clear to the reader. Okay, I want to label everything for the person reading this, and so here we have the enclosed region here. Okay, how about a graphic approximation of this area? Now, one good thing is that we have the axes both scaled the same. One centimeter equaling one half unit. So this gives us the freedom to sketch any kind of uh, simple geometric shape in any orientation and be able to easily just using our ruler measure things off because we are assured that when we measure eight centimeters like this it's just like measuring eight centimeters like this or like this both axes scaled the same okay which geometric shape comes to mind by looking at this uh... let's see well I I think these two sides here, a straight line to approximate a lot of this would work nicely. Uh, now it would give us an odd looking shape. Uh, the most complicated geometric shape I usually ever work with is a trapezoid and I think that's what I'll do here. Alright, let me take one side of it to be, say along here. another side of it perhaps along here now to be a trapezoid I need a pair of parallel sides these are not parallel so my next two sides must be parallel and I suppose to keep it a little simple I think I'm going to run these next two sides parallel to the x-axis alright now this side here what I am doing I'm visualizing so that when I draw the line I like to see the region outside of what I sketched be equal to the void that I have that way I can use this shape directly to approximate the area so maybe hmm, maybe the x-axis itself pretty much I should have gone down a little further. I think we can use the actual x-axis there. Okay, now up here, again, I, need, I must stay parallel to the x-axis so that I have a trapezoid. I want this to fill in these two voids. I would guess maybe about there. Okay. Let me put solid dots at the vertices of this trapezoid to clarify it. And I can write a statement saying that the area of the enclosed region is approximately equal to the area of the dashed line trapezoid. All right, and well, what about the area of a trapezoid? Trapezoids are used a lot in calculus, so it's not bad to memorize their uh, area formula. And for me, I think it's easy to remember because it's just a general rectangle. A rectangle has area uh, equal to base times height. A parallelogram, same thing, it's only it's base times height, which is really its altitude. And the trapezoid, just a more generalization, since the bases are different just think that the area of a trapezoid must then be average base times height of an altitude. So then that will memorize me to write average of the bases. Okay, that must be one half b1 plus b2 times height or altitude. Okay, and in our case here, what is this? All right, here's where the uh, ruler comes into play. Here's this uh, b1 down here on the x-axis. Now in centimeters, it looking to be about 2.6, so that would be 1.3 units. P 
plus b2 up here okay b2 looks to be about 4.7 centimeters which would be about 2. Point, well let's just call it 2.4 and then times the altitude okay let's see looks like we've got about 7.2 centimeters equaling 3.6 units alright so then this becomes uh, let's see 1.3 2.4 we're sitting here at 3.7 a half of that okay we'll say that's about uh, 1.8 Eight times three point six, and that is uh, about equal to. Okay, sometimes you just do some good old-fashioned arithmetic. Okay, so we're looking at about six point five square units. Okay, since this is the conclusive statement put it in a prominent cloud. Alright, that is our part A. Part B, provide a calculus calculation that yields the exact area of the region. Alright, for a calculus calculation of area, we know that means slice up the region and sum the areas of the slices. In rectangular coordinates, like we are now, that means either thin vertical rectangles or thin horizontal rectangles as our slice pieces. Let's first take a look at slicing up our present region with thin vertical rectangles and see if it looks like a good strategy. Alright, vertical rectangles look good. And the reason we say that is, well, first look at the top of each rectangle. In every single case, it passes through the Y2 graph. Then look at the bottom of, every, of each rectangle, and in each case, it passes through the Y1 graph. This is going to lead us to a single basic formulation for the area of the thin vertical rectangle, and that means one definite integral. So now we just need to work on the formulation of the area of a single rectangle. Next, putting a single rectangle in focus, we find that the height of the rectangle is the top y coordinate minus the bottom y coordinate, which would be y2 of x minus y1 of x. Then the width of the rectangle is a small piece of x-axis. We could call that dx. Now we know what it is we want to sum. So after some visualization, ready to record our strategy here. We're going to have the area equal to a sum of thin vertical rectangles from A to B. And first thing to get sorted out is what exactly are A and B, those limits of integration, going to be that's a sub calculation perhaps here all right when we have uh, those x coordinates a and b we have the y sub 1 equaling the y sub 2 and looking back at the formulation that means we've got a 1 half x squared minus 3 halves x plus 1 equaling 2 a y2 would be a negative x squared plus 6x minus 5. Okay, looks like it's a quadratic equation here. Let's uh, move all of this to this left side, and that would give us 3 halves x squared, and then minus 12 halves, 15 halves x, add 5 plus 6, equaling zero. Let's multiply both sides by two. 
3x squared minus 15x plus 12 equals 0. Oh, now both sides divide by 3 evenly. x squared minus 5x plus 4 equals 0. Maybe a factorization. Two numbers is product is plus 4 something negative 5. Yeah, x minus 4 and 1 are such numbers. And this means that x equals 4 or x equals 1. Okay, right now it's time for a uh, look at the graph to make sure we have a consistency still running through the solution. Do those x-intercepts look like they're at 1 and 4? And they actually do, in fact. Okay, so we have, uh, I put a little note here, consistent with the graph. Good to see that. Okay, let's keep going here. So this gives us from... 1 to 4. Okay, a thin vertical rectangle. In our case, that was the y sub 2 minus the y sub 1 dx. And, well, let's see, it's going to be some uh, algebra here. I think I'll t take it as a subcalculation. So perhaps about here. Let's first do the y sub 2 minus the y sub 1 part and that would be let's see negative x squared plus 6x minus 5 subtracting the quantity y1 which is 1 half x squared minus 3 half x plus 1 okay let's see this is minusing the parenthetical grouping, so a negative x squared minus a half x squared, that's minus 3 half x squared. 6x add 3 half x, that's uh, 12, 15 halves. Negative 5, subtract 1, minus 6. Okay. And while we're here, I suppose that we could say that this means that the indefinite integral minus 3 halves x squared plus 15 halves x minus 6 dx would equal, okay, some power rules here. We have the minus 3 halves x to the 3 divided by 3. plus 15 halves a constant x. Okay, antiderivative would be at x squared over 2. Minus 6 antiderivative is a minus 6x. Let's uh, simplify this a bit. This would be cancel, cancel, minus 1 half x cubed uh, plus 15 fourths x squared minus 6x and since we are claiming to solve an indefinite integral here we should have all the antiderivatives at least to make this equation true so put a plus c there of course we want the simplest of these antiderivatives so let's grab this part here with c equal to 0 and call this cap f of x Okay, now we can return to the main equation. This then could be cap f of 4 minus cap f of 1. This could equal, okay, putting the 4 in here, we'd have the minus 1 half times 4 cubed plus 15 fourths, 4 squared, minus 6 by 4, or right, minus 24, and then we're going to subtract the f of 1, that's negative 1 half, plus 15 fourths, minus 6. Okay, how's this working out? Uh, this could be 4 by 4 by 2, 32 with a negative sign. 
factor of 4 could cancel here, leaving us with 15 by 4 by plus 60. There's minus 24. What's going on inside these parentheses? A, let's see, we're going to need to go to fourths, apparently. Alright, so this is going to get a 2 over 2 build up. This is going to get a 4 over 4 build up. This means in terms of fourths, we have negative 2, minus 24, it's minus 26, plus 15, it's negative 11 fourths, subtract a negative, add 11 fourths. Okay, this is turning into negative 32 minus 24 minus 56, plus 60 is 4. Okay, 4 is known as 16 fourths. 16 and 11, 27 fourths. Square units. Okay. Well, there's our conclusion for our calculus solution. Well, let's see if we think this is uh, correct. We'll go on to part C and assess the correctness. All right. Part C, assessing the correctness. Well, let's look back at the two results we have. First, we found that the graphic approximation was 6.5, and we have the calculus calculation giving us 27 fourths. And for comparisons, uh, turning this into a decimal number, this okay could be exactly equal to uh, six and three quarters, six uh, and six point seven five. Okay, great news. Uh, because if I take the larger quantity here, what's ten percent of this? About point seven. These differ by what point two five? Okay, uh, point seven, point three five would be five percent. You know, these are within five percent of each other. Okay, my um. For, I guess it, it depends on what kind of the quality of your graphing, and that's why you want to do a quality graph so you can get a good uh, ass assessment of correctness between a graphic and a, a, an analytic solution. So here we've got ourselves within 5%. If I do a good graph, I like to be within 10%. If I'm within 20%, that's okay then I have to start to wonder if my graph was uh, good quality or so-so uh, quality before I proceed to uh, claim that I think my answer is correct. But here we are, within 5%. So let's make a note of that. So we can say these two results are within 5% of each other, and that's consistent. In other words, both leading to the same basic conclusion. Great. Therefore, we believe that the solutions are likely correct. Okay, good. So we got some confidence there, and anybody reading our solution, especially with that graph, will feel that this is indeed uh, correct. They will be convinced this is a good solution. Okay, great.